I'm just looking at the validators and the liquid loans going head to head. And that's, uh, I think it's amazing. I think, you know, we've had what, uh, eight, 10, 10 months or so, nine or 10 months for the validators to kick off and yeah, get 200 million uh, pulse locked. And then we see liquid loans launched a few weeks ago and, uh, we got, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's coming up on the, on validators too. And who, I, I don't know, do you guys think it'll, it'll look, uh, liquid loans. I know if we, if we do power city and stuff, eventually if we add up the numbers of minted staples, uh, from pulse and pulse X, it will probably, you know, overtake validators at some point, but liquid loans by itself, you think in the next few months, uh, it'll be, it'll be more than validators or are we going to kick up validators, uh, st- starting here now since green candles? Yeah, I'm too? not sure. Uh, I want to know crispy what you think about this, but let me get a, this edge in first, which was that I think the way to think about this type of a question is like, what is the protocol paying out in APY? And this is going to be like one of the focuses of, of my talk and, uh, Crispy's helping me with it as well, of course. But my talk in Vegas at the meetup in uh, March, we're going to be talking about passive income streams on Pulse Chain and all the different options. And really, all these valuations boil down to what's my overhead costs and what's my APR. Um, that's your baseline. And then you have to factor in probably some further qual- quantitative analysis of price performance as a third leg of... Um, uh, a third variable that might change your payout. Um, yeah, it's it's super fun to get into the weeds on that stuff, but fundamentally, liquid loans is paying 100% APR for money locked in the stability pool and 50% APR for money locked in the loan staking pool. And I don't know how it's calculating that 50% in the the loan staking pool because I've noticed that the payouts in there aren't good during stable periods. So actually the low loan stakers, they make more money in a volatile period where people's vaults are getting hit with redemptions and they're adding and removing vaults or in just very trending markets. Whereas like the stability pool seemed to have been paying out a pretty steady amount of loan token. So what that kind of has set up for a situation is a form of hyperinflation on loan token um in the midterm which means that that becomes like a dump token for now but it does have a cap supply of 5.5 trillion so once that gets that supply gets distributed out and more of the total fixed cap supply gets out there in the wild and is distributed more proportionally to the user base i expect that to be a period where loan token can go on a huge run up because it'll start to get more scarce um so you're competing for your APR is competing against the drop in everyone rushing to sell newly inflated loan supply um, on that hundred percent APR. Yeah. Uh, I was just thinking too, when I think about validators for good versus LL, it's when I, when I look at validators, I consider it even, you know, cause when you're doing the, when you're doing loans with liquid loans, for example, you know, you're minting it or you're minting the stables at a certain collateral ratio. So you're going to get, you know, a certain percentage of that, whether it's way different if you do 110% versus 200% and so on. So you're getting that, you're able to, you know, stake in the stability pool or go chase, you know, other, other yield opportunities as well versus validators where you're, you're locking it and it's harder. It's not hard to unlock, but it's, you're much less likely to just because the hoops you have to first, it's like the, um, uh, like a sunk cost fallacy is sort of like that, where you spend all the work. If you set one up yourself, at least you spend all the work and effort to learn all the stuff, get it going. You feel good. You're supporting the network and stuff too. Even though it's a low APR, it's, it's probably accurately under 10% uh, at this point with the uh, 50, 52 K or something we have right now. But the risk is super low because even if you're offline for a while, you know, the pulse you lose is you can make up in a few days type of thing. Mm, so the so, slashing, the slashing, uh, isn't as bad. It doesn't hurt the wallet as bad as what you're saying. As no, if you're offline for, because I've, I've, I've had to switch providers or otherwise you're offline for two or three days. Yeah. You lose maybe a few thousand pulse or something, but oh, okay, it's, so it's peanuts. not a big deal. It's interesting. And so then I was coming around to the idea that the, uh, li- the liquid loan, I'm sorry, the, uh, validating pays like around 9% right now. So the actual r- APR is a lot lower, but it's paying in that precious pulse native asset which is the difference here whereas like the other one you have to kind of convert newly minted loan supply into pulse to get it yeah and uh yeah 
go ahead and yeah i just hope uh, yeah, i'm on mute talking but let me throw this to you yeah dude hey listen i keep saying this and it's not a saying i made up but quantity is a quality of all its own and um during the same period of time sure sure pulse went down at first right pulse also went up right so what are we three x five x from from the low what's the total axis right we're up i think uh three and a half let me double check though all right so um if you even if you take um even if you take one one validator 32 million right just to give you an idea of how i'm thinking about 32 million and you just say hey you're only going to make 10 percent a year right um and so um 10 percent a year is going to give us what times uh, it's going to be uh 3.2 million right now sure right now everybody goes well hey, it's not that much I add up the number you know and i say okay well three zeros one two um you know that's roughly the price right and so that's only 384 dollars a year that's not very much right well guys 100x that right and and what's happening is like everything else is uh barrier to entry um you know one single validator at a penny could be paying you know twenty five thirty thousand dollars a year just for just for one single validator and so um so it certainly uh, it might make sense for people later to come in and do more, more validating it makes even more sense to get started early as always um but the people who are in and this is what i'm hearing from the whales and seeing what the whales are doing they aren't they aren't walking away man so i, I mean i just see them doubling down more and more and more they are going to be the owners of uh of the majority of that that uh, pulse comes out by validating. I, I don't think people talk about it enough. I've tried to shout as loud as I can too. It's like it, if we 10x in price from here in pulse, you that prices out the majority of people in the ecosystem from becoming a validator. It, it's yeah, just dude. it's just math. And, and then all the you know oh you know losing money doing it right now. If you're doing the cloud, for example, you're paying way more monthly cost and you're getting return all that stuff. If you're doing it at home, I'm not even sure what the break even is. How many validators you need to have? Uh, per server to do that. But essentially, you can. You, I, I assume everyone's losing money at this point because it's investment, right? Because Pulse Prize is, is not 10 x already. If it 10 x is much harder to become a validator, uh, unattainable for most people, and it's going to actually start being profitable. So what does that do to the ecosystem? It sounds pretty healthy in one regard, but also it's like a good problem to have. You know, if it goes, you know, 4K to be a validator today, what if it's 40K? What if it's a 400K? Like at what point? do is it just unavailable and we have to do some sort of hopefully trusted product to those pulled staking or protocol change and uh to make it more affordable it's super fast yeah, absolutely yeah yeah so, well you know and what's what's happened too you think about this access might talk about another project that he interviewed the other day but there's some pr protocols are coming along that maybe will allow the common person to go into a pool and and stake um but even outside of that and i know you and i have talked about it before we both done streams on the whole um validation thing the break even uh man it just seems like a no-brainer to get validating and get something running and and it doesn't have to be your whole bag you know but if you're if you're interested in pulse and you want to be in that ecosystem and you're looking for passive income get it set up earlier than later um because it gives you that exposure to that now alternative is hey listen if you're not that you know have that taste uh go go stick access to i think because that's a lot easier to do in a lot, in a lot different way, you know? Yeah. Agree. Get, get anything else on that access? Or do you want to move um, to hex.com? I, I think that the liquid staking protocols that are coming are going to even amplify the amount of staked pulse even more. So I think it's not going to be a thing of less. I think there's going to be more people locking up pulse to get yield. Um, and it's going to only get easier and cheaper to do so. Um, so that's all price positive to me, all, uh, either matter which protocol you're choosing. That's a ton of look, of value that's just locked up and ready for a 10x before like people even start touching into that principal amount. I am bullish on that lock page on GoPulse. I'm bullish on that expanding. There's only they only list maybe five or ten products right now. Right, but. Just imagine, yeah, the different state pool products and stuff coming on. Just it would just... be neat to have a side by side of like the hex locked statistics as well, like based on league and for length, like how many T share years they have, and 